We finally picked up our Momentum 410T8. Woo, here it is. <laughs> and after only one night in it, we realized there's some problems. Plus, I kind of wrecked it. I'm coming home to the great outdoors with a coyote town right outside you do. Since day one, when we launched this channel, our goal was to be 100% upfront with you guys, the good, the bad, the ugly of RV life. Yeah. There's a lot of ugly. Yeah, and that hasn't changed since day one, mm -hmm. even with things like this that we help design. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna tell you when we run into issues or concerns that we have about the 410. Mm -hmm. And we did get into quite a few right off the bat. Yeah. And some of them, some of them are design issues that you know we're gonna give feedback to and get tweaked. When we first started this project of designing a floor plane with Grand Design a few years ago, we had no clue how much time it would take, how much back and forth it would be. You, know, you build a proto, you change something, you build another proto, you change something. It's a lot. It's a lot. And even though we did help inspire and create this awesome floor plan that we are loving so far. Look how big this is. I know. We didn't have a lot of say in those smaller details, some of the more design elements and stuff, because they use a lot of these things across the board in the whole momentum line and sometimes throughout multiple lines. Mm -hmm. And what we found is there are some things that we find troublesome with some of these design elements. And now we actually have the opportunity to give our input on these things too. Mm -hmm. So we've already given this feedback to Green Design. We're gonna cover them with you, what they're doing, what they aren't doing, and where we go from here. When we picked up the 410 a couple of weeks ago, it was a lot of fun because we had a whole crew out there, a lot of Grand Design folks, and our friends at Moride were mm -hmm. there to help us out, which was great. You ready? You guys ready? One, two, three, move the truck! Wow, look at that. <laughs> I can't see what I'm hugging you. Wow, that is awesome. They already put the independent suspension on, so yeah. we're super stoked about yes. that. And then we are also going to tour the new Grand Design Momentum's new plant. So we're doing all that this week. We're super pumped. But what we're really excited about is to go check out our home. <laughs> <laughs> Just like our last RV, when we did our video on the independent suspension, we swore back then we were not gonna have another fifth wheel or RV without the independent suspension. Mm -hmm. So we've got it on this. So we're gonna be covering that. We have 8K axles this time and some other accessories that we're gonna show you in future videos. But thanks so much to Moride for getting us on a smooth ride from day one. Yeah, and thanks for helping us celebrate the big reveal. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure when we picked it up that we didn't just hit the road and leave. We wanted to stay a couple of days nearby Grand Design. So if something happened or we had an issue, we were still there. <laughs> we are going to pee my pants. Pee your pants. We are finally here to pick up our 410. It's right in there. You ready, baby? I love this. Moride. We're gonna use the slides for the first time. Okay. We determined how, initially at least, to, to load some of this stuff and rearrange it. So slide in. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it, it's official. This is another one we're gonna to have to make sure that door. Oh yeah. Door. When we get to our destination, we put it out partially, go check and make sure the pantry door is not yeah. in the way. Of course, we can't get to the fridge from here, guys, but usually this is the slide that we put out when we stop for lunch and stuff anyhow. Mm -hmm. Also, plenty of room right here for a little cooler if we wanted to. Yeah, or so. in the basement too. I just found out something. I can't get to the fridge, look. Hold on, let me suck it in. <laughs> Wonder if I can get through there. Ta-da! Fridge! Can you open, and you can open that side too. I mean, it's closed with a thingy up top. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can get in there. Okay. Come back out. I'll have to come back out. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Like, what do we you, think? I think I'll be better to go this way. Oh. <laughs> I'm not getting any further than this. No! <laughs> I can't get past the door. 
<laughs> well, at least one of us can get to the fridge, baby. If we have to, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. I'm coming home to the great outdoors. All right, getting ready to pull this thing out for the first time. We spent the first night in this RV inside a building, <laughs> which was the Grand Design Marketing Studio. Mm -hmm. Would it be easier to back in or pull straight in? Should we pull in or back in? Check, 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 check. Done work, done work. Action. My heart beats so hard from shore to shore. Our very first night in the RV inside the studio, we did find some things, uh, some issues right away with the design, and we're gonna share those with you in just a minute. Hey, Daisy, come here. Come, come here, come on. Hey, this is our new home. At the design studio, Daisy got to see her new home, <laughs> and it was like she was just home again. She knew exactly what it was. She walked right up to the steps and was like, I want to go in, I want to go in. She's like, oh, I know what those steps are. She keeps looking up at the door. She does. Look at her, look. You ready to go in? Look, look at her. Is that our home? Is that our home? Look at you. Okay, this is going to be Daisy's first look at our new home. You could go. You want to go on your own? Come on. You could go. What do you think? Do you like it? You do? You happy? What do you think, baby? Are you happy? I am. I'm tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> and as you can see, she's pretty cozy. I'm sure a lot of you want to know, but what about those concerns that you had that you addressed in the prototype walkthrough, <laughs> right? Like the pantry and the size of the chase. Mm -hmm. Well, they have since made improvements on those and we're gonna walk you through them right now. And we are so happy with them. Yep, you wanted to start with the chase? Yeah. The chase now has been shrunk a little bit to give more room at the dining table. Yep. Oh yeah. Actually, your legs are longer. You might benefit more from being on this one. On this side. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. This is kind of my chamber. <laughs> it also has storage in it. Yes. <laughs> that is our new toilet paper depository. No, this is like blankets, extra blankets. <laughs> no, Vito. What's wrong with toilet paper? Well, we got the toilet paper dispensary still. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Let, we're going to we'll, we'll figure light, this one light, out. Light fluffy stuff can go in there. We're going to figure this one out later. Yeah. Yeah. They also discovered when they were actually trying to transition this thing from apartment mode to travel mode that the back needed to come off, mm -hmm. which makes this chase easy to move for travel day. And we'll yeah. cover that once we get to our new setup and breakdown videos in the yes. future. Next on the list was the size of the pantry shelves. A lot of people were concerned because the shelves weren't very deep. Mm -hmm. And you were right, they yeah. weren't very deep, but there was some room to play with there, luckily. The shelves are now bigger and they are big enough for a standard size cereal box. I'm an 80s kid, I love cereal. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because the shelves are deeper, but it made the whole pantry look bigger. Mm -hmm. And it, it actually looks not too different from the pantry in our 387. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about that for mm -hmm. sure. That, that was a really good chance. Yeah. Also back here, the coffee bar did get extended. We'll measure that and show that to you. The countertop part did. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit more space there for your coffee makers and stuff. Mm -hmm. 10 inches. 10 inches. 10. Hold on, take a picture. Okay. And then because they were able to make the change and shrink up the size of this chase a little bit, 
that makes the room at the dinette better. They moved it over uh, a couple inches or so, I think. So yeah. we've got good room there, but we're still gonna make some more tweaks to that also. Yes. Oh. Also, you can't see it, but there's a handrail right there. Yep, because that was another <laughs> concern that people had. I never really thought about it, but after hearing some people say, well, what about a handrail for those stairs? Mm -hmm. Good point, guys. And because of you, we have one now, so it's awesome. And they beefed up this corner too. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> also, the toilet in the little closet, water closet up here, was moved back just a touch. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's just jump into some of these design concerns that we had that make some of the functionality a little bit more challenging. These were things that I, I didn't notice when we were laying out the floor plan and stuff. Yeah. And you don't really notice until you try to use it. Yeah, you know, we were so focused on the big picture, the layout. Mm -hmm that we didn't give a lot of thought to like so one of the things that are the window boxes. Mm -hmm. They look cool, right? And they're much lower profile. In the past, a lot of the, the trim around the windows and the valances were thick and they blocked mm -hmm. a lot of light. So now they're thinner and they're skinnier, but because there's a bottom piece on it, it kind of makes pulling the blinds down very tricky. Mm -hmm. And getting also, them up even trickier because yeah. if, once you get it tucked into the little loop in the bottom, there's no way to get it out of there with the string. Yeah. You got to like roll it and push it. And it's a, just an issue that they're, they're definitely addressing. And I can envision problems then happening to the blackout shades as mm -hmm. well because they're getting all mangled. Mm -hmm. And it's also a problem with the little nightstands in the bedroom because it has that board at the bottom. It takes over half of the little nightstand side table thingies and they're small as it is mm -hmm. so you can't even sit water on part of it and that's a no go yeah and the other issue in that same area actually two little issues one is those nightstands which are gonna really more like little boards sticking out mm -hmm. of the wall could definitely stand to be longer now that that slide is so much deeper they definitely need to be a little longer yes and like you said the box gets in the way mm -hmm. the other thing in the bedroom is the night lights in our 397, we had a switch on the wall. Now that switch on the wall was convenient, but every now and then I would roll over. You'd bump, bump I would it. bump it in the middle of the night and the lights come on. But that didn't happen very often. But uh, hold on. There. Yeah. I had to actually lift my whole body and my butt Out off of bed the bed to just to there. get up there. So did he. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm six, I'm six foot tall mm -hmm. and I still can't reach it without getting up off right. my butt a little bit. Yeah, so that's a design issue in my opinion and just things that I think will be frustrating over time. Yeah, some other issues we found related to blinds. Uh, number one, there isn't one on the front door. <laughs> <laughs> it now comes with the Lippert Thin Shade ready, but it's ready. It's not there's no shade. Done. There's no shade. There's no shade. So, so you can black out this whole thing, but there's no privacy on this window. Yes. And do you want to tell about the other blind issue? Yeah, oh yeah. And then the other blind issue that we had is also in the same area. And it's right over here. The window above the stove right there. They changed it from the cloth blind. The accordion that was there. style, yeah. yeah. And I think it's because it's so close to the stove, right? And that stove is much more powerful mm -hmm. and it's a really awesome stove, but they put the metal Venetian blinds there. Yeah. But they don't quite fit the window. So there's yeah, a little space there that people can see in if they really tried. I'm happy that they listened to my feedback and wanted that mirror in the bathroom to be a medicine cabinet as well. Mm -hmm. They have done that in our unit, and but I think they're still kind of working on a better one. So what I don't like about it is that it's not tall enough and it's not quite deep enough either. So it doesn't fit like a regular bottle of contact solution in there. It doesn't fit a lot of stuff that I'm used to putting in a medicine cabinet. So that's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And these might sound like little things, but we know from years of living in an RV that they could end up being very frustrating. Something else was the lack of outlets on the island. Yeah, our 397 had outlets on both ends. Mm -hmm. And this one just has them in the middle there. Right, yeah, right. Right over here. Right there. And this is just one of those things that, well, you know, do we do we ever plug in four things at once on the island? I don't mm -hmm. think so. No. <laughs> and then the last one is something that is more up your, your alley. Yeah, the front cap lights mm -hmm. and the bottom blue lights. So we got LED lights on the bottom, just like on our 397, and also on the front. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference now is they're RGB, which means you can change colors, which is really cool. The downside is, unlike on our 397, this one has the bottom lights and the cap lights tied together into one switch. Now, 
we know that that could be a problem mm -hmm. for a lot of people out there because we've seen all the posts about people getting upset that RVers are leaving those front cap lights on all night long. They're kind of obnoxious they at can night. Be. They can be. I think they can be, and it depends on where you're parked, right? But we like to keep our underbelly lights on mm -hmm. at night for pest deterrence and things like that. So we want to find a way where we can turn off the front cap, leaving the underbelly on. Yep. All three axles are in the driveway now. All right, I'm starting to cut it a little bit already. Now we're going to get into the next day where we actually traveled with this RV and that's when some of the things that weren't working correctly were noticed. Yeah, and also some of them were design related. One thing to remember too as we talk about this is that this is our RV and it's close to production ready but we're still kind of considering it a prototype because it's our job to give them the feedback on these things so they can change them. Right, exactly what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But because it's not a true full production model, I think that some steps were skipped as far as the thorough real PDI mm -hmm. that the rigs go through. And of course it didn't go yeah. through a dealer PDI either. Yeah. The very first thing that was an issue is the Volta system and our power situation. Now again, the Volta system, they're making some updates to that too that we are testing out for them. Right. So we kind of expected there might be some issues there, but our first night was without power. Well, but I do want to reiterate that we expected some issues to come up with this Volta system mm -hmm. because that's what we're doing with Volta is working on how to get this system best suited for RVers traveling fifth wheels mm -hmm. because there are pros at it with like the high-end Prevos and things like that, but the fifth wheel market is new for them. And so that's our job. Yeah, we do things differently in fibers yeah. than you're doing a Prevos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yes, it was a, uh, you know, 20 degree night and not having power was a little scary. Yeah, luckily we were, we were in the heated uh, design studio that first night. Yeah. And then the second night we still did have propane heat. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna go deep into those because we're gonna cover the Volta system in a different video all by itself. Once the kinks are worked out and all of that, but I do want to give a shout out to Volta because they really stepped it up been and they came the all the way to our cabin <laughs> to figure out what was going on. More of that in future videos. And I also want to say real quick about Volta because we get a lot of people asking like, why isn't it on the build sheet? When's it going to be available? We still have time before that's going to be available mm -hmm. for you to order because of this. They're not going to allow it to be ordered until it is right. Yeah, but I will give you a little teaser and say it's freaking cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's this new inverter they have, I don't know how it puts out seven or eight kilowatts split phase by itself in the single inverter. It's amazing. It's like magic. How but we'll excited get into that. is he? You guys? <laughs> it's really cool, but we'll get into those later. Okay. The other thing that stood out right away on our first travel day was the location yeah. of the LCI-1 control panel and the Volta panel. This is a functionality design issue. And it's I keep looking over here because currently it's on this wall. When the slide is in, it covers these panels so you can't get to them. And the LCI system, when you're traveling, pops up with this message if you pull it up on the app that says, we've detected you're in motion and some features are disabled, which makes sense. You don't want to accidentally put your slides out while you're going down yeah. the road. but. Screen's behind here. We can't get to it. Oh my gosh. I hope I can get my arm back after this. Can you, yeah, can you push the button? I got okay. the button. All right. Uh, so, but, uh, see, yeah, I'm I not tall see... enough to see. What are we looking for here? What? Well, I don't know. Of course, I need my glasses yeah. for this crap. I wonder if just activating the screen is good enough. Let me see what I can do now. Hold on. That was something that right away we let them know that needs to be moved. Mm -hmm. So this is the new lunch setup. Access to the fridge, the stove, the microwave. We just don't have access to our table to sit. That's okay. We brought our stools out. We'll sit here. Tara gets to sit by the fireplace. So does Daisy. What do you think, Daisy? A few other things that we noticed, not until we got here to the cabin and tried turning everything on. Welcome to Kentucky. You got spiked hair. Look at that. 
There's a problem with the rear AC. It's making like a noise, like it's grinding something. And then maybe there's just something. It could just be a piece of plastic yeah. in there or something. Yeah. But... We haven't had a chance to go inspect that yet. Yeah. Here's what the uh, garage sounds like. And then the last thing that we noticed was that the rear, the, the rear awning, the rear on the awning isn't closing up all yeah. the way. If you were to do one, two, three, it's the third awning. We have four awnings total. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it wasn't seating properly. It was just a little twist or something. It's a minor adjustment. We didn't have time to really delve into it. We just got it fixed enough to travel. Right. So we discussed all these issues with Grand Design and we have a good game plan moving forward. And let's just get into that stuff right now. First, the design stuff. Yeah, well, we mentioned this stuff right here. I'm just starting with this because it's in front of me. The panels, the on. panels on the wall are going to be moved over to this wall. Mm -hmm. There's a pocket door in there, but there's room on the side closest to the entry door, so yeah. they can put them right there, which is really a perfect spot. Right, which means that there is a cork board there right now with some coat hooks. That's probably not going to be there anymore, but they are working on something to still keep the coat hooks and make it still a coat rack space because that's a really good spot for that. Mm -hmm. If not, I probably could find something else that we could put up there. Yeah. Just and they, easy. They talked about maybe moving the cork board over to this wall, but Tara voted no. No. She wants that wall open for decoration. Let us know what you think about that. Well, the thing is, if you've got this open wall right here, you can do whatever you want with it. Right, ladies? Because I know with the 397, I didn't have wall space to hang pictures or artwork or anything like that. There was just really no wall space. So I'm excited to have this wall space. <laughs> She's already got the stuff to go on. It. I literally already bought it. <laughs> I, I can't wait to share it with you. So the window box situation, they're not settled on exactly what they're doing. They have some stuff going into prototype, I think, this week. Mm -hmm. And when the SRT team comes out, they're going to maybe try some stuff. My solution would be to just take the boxes off, which I know a lot of people have done on older models. Mm -hmm. Uh, or maybe take them off and get them a little wider so they have more space and take the bottoms off them off. I do know they are working for us a solution. Yeah. We don't know what it is yet. Not yet. Also, what we don't know for sure about are the reading lights. Yes. Uh, we talked to them this morning and apparently there's an issue with the wires that go down to like the old switches and they were maybe having some problems with those. So that's still a, an up in the air. We don't know what or if they're going to do about that. Our solution is going to be some battery powered little stick up lights. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know if I like if the way she, it looks. If she approves the decor. Right. <laughs> so the next thing, guys, is this privacy shade, this lipper thin shade or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, all you gotta do, these are like 40 bucks on Amazon, get mm -hmm. one of these, it pops in there. This is one of the very few things that I think is just staying the way it is. Yeah. So if you do order one of these, just go ahead and get yourself a thin shade so you're ready to go. Get this on day one so you can close your blinds. Yeah. They're also looking into a different option for the blinds above the stove because, of course, they don't want something that doesn't fit the whole window. Yeah. And that medicine cabinet, remember I told you they are still looking into options. They realized that that mirror in the bathroom really should be storage medicine cabinet. And so they're trying to find something that fits that space a little bit better, that has a little bit more depth, so it holds a little bit more. And again, oh, yeah, I don't, yeah, you know, these problems just happen. So they are in the process of finding solutions for all of these design issues that we've mentioned. And, you know, right now we don't have any pictures or any updates because it's too new. But mm -hmm. as they as they make these changes, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But the good news is they are working on it. Yep. Uh, what's next? The outlet? Out outlets. Yeah. Here's what we did with that. We basically agreed to just try it like it is and see if we actually run out of outlet space. They said they can certainly put two of them together on the side. In the same spot. In the same spot. Which is a little... Yeah. The issue is putting them on the side here with this shiplap, yeah. I guess, is a real problem. So we're going to keep an eye on that and then let them know, hey, we really need another outlet or... Eh, and what do you fine. guys think? Do you want just the one outlet that's right here? Or would you like two outlets side by side? Like, I'm not sure that I would need four in one spot, but we want to know what you guys think. Grand Design wants to know what you guys think. And then lastly, the lights, the front cap lights and the underbelly lights. Mm -hmm. When the SRT team comes here, they're going to show us how 
to do that, right? Yeah, my plan was to just install some sort of cutoff switch. I figured, and I was right, the reason they didn't put those separate is because there aren't enough ports on the LCI control board down there to make them separate entities inside the system. But they can put a kill switch on the front cap lights, which is really all we want. Mm -hmm. You know, that's actually kind of cool because we can set the colors and all that. And if we want to turn them off at night, we just hit the kill switch for just the front cap lights and run yeah. just the bottoms. And once we have that done, we'll share with you how to do it. Mm -hmm. Now the updates on the Volta system, right now, the way it stands is everything is working. We have power, it's charging, it runs great. It's a lot of juice, 18 kilowatt hours, expandable to like 36, which is nuts. We're going to be working with them. I think most of the changes going forward are going to be software slash firmware related. Mm -hmm. And we're going to walk through communicating with them and, and updating it and testing uh, to give them that feedback and get it, this thing solid. Yeah. We want this power system to be nailed down so it's user friendly, push a button and you're done. And then the SRT team is coming in, I don't know, a week to 10 days, and they are going to look at all of the other problems that we had. So they're going to do all of those things that we had mentioned earlier. So we are getting everything taken care of so that we can hit the road after the holidays. Yeah, and again, these won't affect the production builds because these are the things that are going to go into the production builds. Uh, so we're not going to have a lot of DIY kind of stuff around this, except for the things like that switch, the thin shade, things like that. We're going to show you all those in videos. In fact, we'll have a video out in a couple of weeks, I think. This is the first time Grand Design and maybe any manufacturer really has partnered with people like us who have lived in an RV for five years. So we are all learning as we go. And what we have realized and what we realized really quickly was that when it comes to new floor plan designs, it makes a lot of sense to have some people stay in it before you release it to production, mm -hmm. which is something that they have now adopted and they are going to be doing moving forward because they listened to our input. And so it's really cool that we have a great relationship with them and they listen to our suggestions. And I think it'll only be beneficial for everyone, including you guys out there who are maybe looking into getting a brand design. Yeah, this has definitely been a learning curve. <laughs> And the curve's like this. <laughs> Man, gosh, we are really looking forward to just being able to start traveling again and, yeah. and doing all that stuff because this past year has been a little bit weird for us because mm -hmm. we haven't done as much traveling. It's been a lot of work on getting this RV ready. And of course we bought a cabin and we spent time with that. And so ready next year, 2023 ought to be a year that we're like more used to as far as the traveling and stuff. Yeah, this year has been very very busy and not as much fun not as much right? fun because we haven't been able, we haven't been doing as much traveling yeah. and we're going to get back to that yes that's the whole point right living in an rv just to live in an rv isn't you know you want to go someplace yeah you want to take it places <laughs> that's the point that is the status of the 410 i know a lot of you want to see a walkthrough and stuff but as you can see there's nothing really in it yet mm -hmm. we haven't moved in we are taking the time to enjoy the cabin and time with family and the holidays. And we're going to do it slowly over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. We're going to move in and get ready to hit the road and head south and go somewhere warmer mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Yep. So. And we will be at the Florida Super RV Show or Super Show RV, whatever it's called. We will be in Tampa. We are going to do a meetup. So be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and that stuff to get those info details. Wow. I think that he got tongue-tied on that one. I did. We should just wrap it up, I think. Okay. <laughs> we almost forgot to tell you about the uh, little problem I had when I was driving this thing for the first time. Yes, I wrecked it. And you can see it a little bit right here. It's not really that bad. It was one of those situations where I was probably driving a little more comfortably than I should have having not been in an RV or traveled with one in a while. And I was making a right turn, followed by kind of another right turn. And I just cut a corner a little too sharp and rubbed up against a pole. Now in my defense, it was at night and getting kind of dark. And we normally don't like to be pulling into a campground in that fashion. But the pole was there, it was black, no reflectors, but I did cut the corner a little bit and it was my fault. And you can see just a little bit of damage on the skirt down here. We're gonna have our body guy in Florida take care of that for us. When we do that, of course, we'll show that to you. But luckily the damage was very minor, but it's just gut-wrenching, man. It just hurts my heart. <laughs>